and then how the assessment kicks in at a later date. Uh, obviously, you just don't know about the assessment framework. Uh, but the, in, with regard to how the initial training is delivered, am I correct in thinking that that initial training, probably the recruit course, when they're out on station, that, that training is then uh, determined and delivered by the stations themselves? Or are they supported by a central training team? They're supported by station based trainers who are supported by a central based training team. So subject matter advisors developed through CPD, the station based trainers. The station based trainers work alongside operational stations within the command area to deliver and support the training that's carried out at station. I'm sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm still a little unclear. Uh, is this difference between an assessor and uh, a training deliverer? So are you saying that the, the assessor also delivers training? Yes. The assessor supports the, the supervisory manager. So it's the watch manager or crew manager of every station who's responsible for maintaining competencies against the framework of delivery. So, for example, they will do a number of training sessions around extrication uh, as, a, as a peer group. They may pull in the station-based trainer to then oversee that training and guide and deliver additional development and additional training. And when they feel that they are in a position to be assessed, they will then ask for a assessed criteria standardised assessment. Okay, so is there a conflict there in terms of you've got somebody who's delivering training and then assessing the training that they've delivered themselves? There could be, but we wouldn't encourage the same station based trainer to be the person that is the assessor. Okay. We would encourage a different station based trainer to be the assessor. So that is so so that's moving a station based assessor from another station to assess yeah, well, they, they would do anyway because we train our, our MRT training sessions are sessions from different locations in different stations. It's not always the same group. We will also do 160 other planned training sessions across different areas of the organisation, which assessments may well be carried out by someone I've never met before on a different side of the command. Okay, thank you. So, same so try and get around that. Otherwise, it could be that insular. Yeah. You're only assessing and ultimately you're signing off your friends and your peers without there really being that. So there is that expectation that it's not someone from your command. Okay. Any other questions? Can I just ask you about the training that you When you, when you came to Westmead and I sat in the room, I had a rather sharp kick on my leg. Um, because what I actually said in that room was, when we moved away from an academy-based venue to what we did, it was rubbish. And at that point when I said it was rubbish, I got a very sharp kick under the table. But in reality it was, because what they did was, we're closing our academy, through comprehensive spending review, it was run down, it didn't need a lot of maintenance and work, it didn't necessarily give us the functions that we wanted. But then it was just, well, it's your problem now. You need to go away and make sure you're competent. But there was no framework put in place, there was no, how are we going to achieve this? It was just, a, we're going to close it down because we can't afford it and it's now on you. So for, for, for us, it is a big cultural change to move away from a training venue. All our regional partners have got individual training centres and we still don't. We've, we've seen venues like this, and Manchester, don't you know, massive great big training venues and we don't have a training venue. Would I like one? Yeah, I would. Can we afford one? No, we can't. Um, so it's just about that if we can't have what, what others have got, we have, we have to adapt. So culturally, we still we go through that Cuba Ross, we've still got people in denial. They still want to be brought back to a venue and be assessed and told when they're going to have that. We've got people that fully buy into it, who understand the rationale and why we've gone down the route that we have. And they enjoy the fact that they, they've got the autonomy to set their own development and training. But we've got that large group in the middle who are still in that cultural block, who, who don't like what we do, but we're not in a position to change it. So this is what we've got, so we have to make it effective. And the only way we can ensure it's effective is by regularly reviewing what we've put in place and auditing um, to make sure that it's being done appropriately. Um, to, to move on until, of course, we get that big magic pot and we might get a new training venue. But at the moment, that's what we've got.